DJ Agus Madunway is Rowan uh, and I am running so far behind today. I um oh god. So last week there was an phone up interview appointment thing with my DHS caseworker and he was on vacation until this last Tuesday. So then what happens is um it was rescheduled apparently and I did not get word of the rescheduling until maybe just Wednesday. Fun times, right? So um that happened today a bit earlier than I expected, something like 8.30, which means I was in bed for... <sighs> oh god, I could not get to sleep at the time I needed to, so that was like three hours I was in... I was asleep. Uh, uh just because, like, I don't know, I, I always just end up um, going to bed late, and by late, I mean late by my... Um, time, because I'm usually in bed at, whoa, this is on, I'm usually in bed at 4 a.m. and up around noon. Oh, right, so before I do anything that uh, is at least vaguely exciting, I usually have some kind of anxieties that, I mean, nothing big, nothing big. But, basically, I have the damnedest time getting to sleep when I'm doing something I'm expecting to that, I don't know, like, uh, uh, first day of school dinners from the night before, where it's, I, I, I've always had the damnedest time trying to get to sleep, but I usually uh, wake up easily enough, but, like I said, um, I, uh, I was also woken up about an hour before I expected to. I was kind of thinking that this call would be at 9.30 or something. So I was like, okay, well, four hours, and then, like, right back for another four hours. But now it was, like, three, and I don't know. Something about that just threw me off so hard. And because apparently I had to um, get up out of bed at the same time, you know, like during the phone thing, and I didn't even remember doing this until I uh, I just started uh, traipsing around the apartment this morning, right now, which is like uh, about 1.30 in the afternoon, so apparently I got up in the middle of this phone interview, and I barely remember anything that was said. I remember that it happened, and I remember that I gave proper information, and I remember that I wrote a note on here to go and make copies of my bank statements and everything to take to DHS. Uh, ideally, oh hey, there's where that went. Ideally, I'm going to be doing this on Tuesday, but he said, like, you know, as soon as humanly possible, so Monday's not good for it, and why is Monday not good for it again? Uh, please, please, please let me, okay. Oh, right, Nigel's getting his nails clipped. Nigel had an appointment to get his nails clipped today, but, um, but then what happened? What? You remembered Rolling Sculpture Car Show. Uh, usually it's the first weekend of July in downtown Ann Arbor. It's also usually like noon to eight. This year it's two to ten. So that's nice. Um, I'm only going to be like... If I push myself, I can get out of here in just under an hour and a half. So I'm not going to be as late as I've been to the previous couple that I've gone out busking to, but um, there's a couple things that I wanted to get done on my way out. Okay, I need to refill my pill pods, and I, um, okay, pill pods is today, recycling is tomorrow.
I hate doing the uh, the deposit bottles on Sundays because that's a day almost everybody likes to do it, and I don't want to do that on Monday either because uh, Nigel needs to get his nails clipped. Um, I could, you know, do it after I bring him back home, but he's so heavy, and I'm on the third floor for some reason. Speaking of recycling that I'd mentioned, so. Right here, this fan, General Electric, um, approximately 1910, maybe 1915. So I had three working electric fans here, not counting the ceiling fan in the kitchen. This one, which is over a century old, there's the fan setting on the air conditioner, which runs all the time because I can't afford to run the AC and then this one which is maybe 10 years old tops um, every summer I take it out on the balcony dust it out um, and plug it in or at least I did because of the three electric fans I had running all simultaneously and all the stuff on my kitchen table. So I had them all going a couple days ago when it was really brutally hot and humid and so like having a fan going was ideal to the situation. So yeah, guess which one caught on fire? <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It is verifiably younger than me. So, <laughs> so I have kind of lost... I'm, I'm gradually losing more and more faith in electrical appliances younger than myself as I get older. And, you know, this one has not caught on fire. Granted, because it is so old, I always um, turn it off um, before I leave and before I go to bed, so I'm about to turn it on right now, and it always takes about a minute to, um, to get going, just, but that's, that's, that's actually pretty common with, uh, with old electric fans. Um, this is not the only one I've known to do this. There was one at, um, at, uh, Jim McDonald Antique in Depot Town in, Ip here in Ypsilanti, and that one is even older than this one, um, or, well, it is, but uh, somebody else got it. But that one was all brass, and so the price reflected that, which was uh, 200 and the uh, uh, Linda, one of the, one of the owners, uh, she and I said that if I could get the money together, um, she was gonna let me have it for about 175 but somebody else was able to pay, you know, the full price for it before I was able to save up even half for it. Um, this one is still going. It's over a hundred years old. The little silver one I pulled out of the recycling box, <laughs> that one caught on fire. It wasn't a big fire, thankfully, obviously. Um, but yeah, like... You see sparks coming, like, right out of the center of the motor, like, little orange sparks, and you see smoke, and you're like, oh my gosh, the fan has caught on fire. The ten-year-old fan has caught on fire. The hundred ten year old fan is fine. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cobble together what passes for breakfast around here lately, and, um... And then what happens? Um, yeah, then fill up my pill pods, maybe shower. Yeah, shower. Um, I showered yesterday, but it's summer. Odd how that happens, isn't it? Uh, get dressed and then get going with the accordion and it's probably going to rain, so. But if I can get even $5 out busking, um, that would be nice. 
that would be nice. That would mean that, um, ugh. That would mean I'd have five dollars. <laughs> Alright, see you in a bit. Ugh. Bit later than I was hoping for, but I, uh, shit. It was not a day to wash the hair today, but then what happens, so, um, right. Fuck. I'm running later than I really wanted to, but shit happens, and you gotta go with it. On the good side, um, I mean, it's all gonna be on Main Street, downtown, uh, Ann Arbor, so on the good side, there's a lot of restaurants there. Granted, not as many as there used to be because the cost of rent in said city strip, especially Main Street, Ann Arbor, like, I'm, I'm surprised, honestly, that anything except corporate, um, you know, like, big chains are able to pay the rent in downtown Ann Arbor, and fortunately, you know, there are still a fair amount of restaurants, and that seems to be the, uh, the primary, uh, thing that draws, uh, uh, my thoughts on this are all jumbled right now. I'm barely awake this, because 8 a.m. Know that I keep, relatively speaking, unusual hours compared to most people, but it's still, like, like, I know this fact intellectually that I keep much later hours than the average person, but it's still, it, it just, I still don't understand how people can, uh, can function being up so early, it just, there's something that just, about that that makes no sense to me. I am so impressed with myself, I figured out, so, I have become, in my age, one of those people who is all just like, don't even talk to me before my coffee, and it, it's just a fact of life for some of us, but I, but with summer, and of course, today's a really nice day, which is also good, so this means like, after the whole rush hour traffic and people, because it's Friday, want to go downtown uh, Main Street to go to a slightly overpriced restaurant, at the very least slightly, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, they want to go out there, so it's really nice outside right now. I hope it's not going to rain while I'm there, but, uh, so yeah, the weather's nice. Um, and everything, but still, like, this is one of those, it's been, like, absurdly hot and humid, like, a bit earlier in the year than we're used to. Like, we usually wait until, like, closer to the end of the month, like, around my birthday, <laughs> which is also around the time of Ann Arbor Art Fair, where I'm also going to be busking, just like last year, and the year before, and the year before that, and, uh, and on and on, and it's going to continue until either I move out of the area, or the sun explodes, whichever happens first. But that's another thing. So, because it's so hot, and especially humid, you don't want to boil coffee for the French press every morning, and so what have I been doing? I looked up cold, cold brew coffee directions, which is basically just like, um, use a coarse French press grind, which I do because I usually make French press, and then rather instead of um, using hot water, though it looks like from the various directions I've read, like if you do use hot water, um, you can probably cut a few hours out of it, like when you put it in the fridge, but I don't really have sufficient room in the fridge for even just my French press, which is only a, uh, I want to say it's about a quart, roughly. I want to say it's a 30 ounce one. Maybe 32 when you count the room for uh, the grounds. So I figured I can modify the instructions and I have a big glass mason style jar with a spigot on the front and it's unfortunately a, a plastic spigot because it's not... I, I got it I got it from Five Below a couple years ago um, and I usually make hibiscus tea in it but I might end up just getting a second one for hibiscus tea, because this is like, I can do my coffee the same way I do, like, hibiscus sun tea. I just put the grounds in overnight, <laughs> and it ends up being about three days worth of coffee that I don't have to boil, which is nice, which is nice. So I'm not, like, sitting over a hot stove first thing in the morning while the temperature in here is already trying to bake me, because... <laughs> Um, uh, I, I managed to forget to shave, so this is going to be exciting, isn't it? So yeah, this is, this is my life. Um, 
So the reason that I go out busking and I'm especially diligent about it in July is, well, especially this year. So most of last year, Isaac was still here. So while I knew um, last July that, that whatever the hell he and I were doing was on its last legs, still he was uh, giving me half of the rent plus, uh, well, not exactly half, but, um, but, you know, he was giving me a portion of the rent and paying half of the, um, electric and internet connection. So, um, this is one of my tips. It's like, oh, okay, this is their, uh, their, um, their style shaving cream called Prince. I think it's just, I don't know why they call it Prince, but... I'm like, you know what? Why the hell not? Because it's not purple. I would expect something called Prince to be purple, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's got a very mild scent. I don't remember what it scented like, but that's one of my things that I do to, um, keep myself in nice little bits and bobs is, like, I'll go to Lush and, like, y y they'll basically, at least at the one at the Briarwood Mall in Ann Arbor, they will let you take home samples of as much as the individual employees will let you get away with, which, um, I'm sure there are some who eventually will cut me off, but the young man who was helping me out, um, this last time, he just... <laughs> He, uh, he did not, so, um, yeah, when I do an apartment tour, I'm probably going to explain, you know, some things a little bit better, but this razor, uh, circa 1910 about, and it just takes, um, single-edge razor blades. A lot of people use, um, newer styles of these classic safety razors that take the, uh, the double-edge blades, and... That's all great. People can use what they like, but I like this one. Now, it would be a lot easier on me if I would, you know, possibly replace it with a, uh, with a double-edged one, just because those, um, Walgreens keeps those blades in stock, whereas the single-edged blades, I have to either order from the Walgreens website or Amazon or something, but it's like, you know, they're a lot harder to find in stock at places, though they are still made, obviously. Last year, I was just kind of like, I went out busking at Rolling Sculpture, but art fair, because it's almost always on my birthday weekend, which is why for my birthday weekend. A lot of my friends, it's easier to do things on the weekend. Not all of them, but a lot of them it is. And, uh, and then what happens is, um, uh, but with art fair, that, uh, that gets the traffic, like, even if you're not going into, even if you're not going to be downtown Ann Arbor, there is still going to be traffic all the way up Washtenaw and everything. Like, I have been stuck in art fair traffic up Washtenaw like, on the bus for a good 20 minutes. Like, uh, a couple years ago, um, I was coming back from, ah, oh shit, coming back from downtown with my harmonium, which, uh, like, a lot earlier than I really expected to, but I was just exhausted at that point, and so it was like, yeah, it was a lot earlier than I wanted to. I, I, I'm I pretty sure it was around 7 in the afternoon on, I think this was Friday of that year's art fair. And we were stuck in traffic, like on the bus, all of us, on uh, at Washtenaw and just like almost to the stadium cross. Almost to the stadium cross. Um, so, like, Washtenaw goes this way, and the stadium comes up this way, and then kind of ends, like, right about here. So, we were stuck, like, right about here on Washtenaw, like, just before the stadium intersection, or something, whatever that is, because it's not, like, it doesn't properly go all the way through, so it feels stupid calling it an intersection, since there's no inter, really, but just, like, so right up to the corner of stadium. Uh, we were stuck, like, right about here for damn near 20 minutes, like, out next to that Volk Dental... <laughs> V-O-L-K, which 
um, a lot of my heathen friends are just... <laughs> They're, they're kind of entertained by this for all the wrong reasons, because uh, if you're not especially familiar with heathen community um, dramas, which I'm not especially familiar with, but, but I know enough heathens that I know enough to know that there is this, uh, there's kind of a divide amongst heathen groups where with people who are fairly inclusive which, as far as I'm concerned, are the nice, normal, mentally healthy heathens. And then there's the crypto-fascists. And the crypto-fascists... Well, some of the crypto-fascists have uh, adopted the term Volkish, V-O-L-K-I-S-H. So, yeah, the Volk Dental Clinic just... <laughs> it, it's funny for all the wrong reasons. Like, <laughs> oh, I, I'm sure it's somebody's last name. I'm sure it is. But the, just the fact that it, 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 I don't know, maybe it's just funny to other pagans. But So I decided, like, kind of quietly to myself yesterday, because I was expecting it to be hotter today than it is, I'm not doing the, uh, yeah, the full 1920s drag. I'm just going to do like, vaguely inspired by said, but, uh, but now the, um, now the weather is actually kind of decent, but at the same time, that, uh, either dress I've got will take too goddamn long to get into, and if it does end up raining, like, it kind of feels like it's going to rain, and that's, that's not good for being a street musician. It really isn't. I'm just a pocket-sized fairy who just slaps on foundation around his, uh, slaps on foundation after putting, um, concealer on his psoriasis and occasionally other areas like my, uh, the dark circles that are usually in the area of my eyeballs aren't so circly today. I usually work down, as I'm sure people have noticed if they've seen me do my makeup before today. In spite of the fact that the weather's suddenly being pretty decent compared to how it's been other days this week, I, um, I'm still going with the outfit I threw together last night before I got to bed, and never do this with your good scissors, but <laughs> just like don't <laughs> do as I say, not as I do, kids. But uh, okay, that's not bad. Kind of like that. So I did not put together a vintage outfit. I put together an inspired. Well, I don't know. I guess the. Uh, I guess the penwa, um, or, uh, like, you know, I don't know. It's not exactly a kimono for first, for starters. The embroidery on the back and sides is Chinese-inspired, not Japanese-inspired. And secondly, it's, like, completely Western design. It, it's a penwa, so, um, then what happens? Right, Rouge, why did I put that right back? So, yeah, I'm gonna do that and, uh, and a lace skirt underneath. So yeah, I, I don't know, I'm just going with a bit more of a theatrical look today. Um, like I said, it's, uh, it's not drag, because I was expecting the weather to be a bit more than it is. And not at all historically accurate, but decent enough for busking, right? I got back from uh, downtown busking with my accordion a few hours ago, actually. It is so late right now, but... So, I was unable to film um, downtown from the car show because when I got downtown finally, well, so first I picked up my mail, and I've got a book here, and there is something in an Amazon box over there that I haven't brought over here yet. Yeah, I'll So, I apparently got a couple of shiny uh, birthday gifties 
from people at the post office today, which is really nice. And uh, before I open them up, thank you all so much. This is... Uh, but yeah, when I got, when I finally got to the, uh, to the, um, 1916 Detroit Electric that I love so much, and he did bring out the, uh, the 1916 one, uh, and that's the red one this year. By the time I got there, my phone had under 50% charge, uh, plus I also forgot the charger. I forgot the charger because I was running so goddamn late, so I, uh, I, I was unable to charge, and I don't like filming when... The, uh, when, when the uh, phone is at under 50% charge or, um, you know, when I'm unable to plug it in and, you know, just like with the, with the whole charger plug and adapter and everything. Um, so, so then what happens is I, um, you know, I just, I just didn't film, but I did end up playing, um, and when I said make noises with my accordion, that's basically what I was doing. So I was, um, uh, in fact, I ended up like just kind of like abandoning the, uh, the, the Lee Morse and Gus Kahn songs at some point and just went with, you know, whatever I felt like singing. Like, um, uh, I, I sang a bunch from, um, Wall of Voodoo's, um, Seven Days in Sammy Town album and also from, uh, from um, uh, David Bowie's uh, Ziggy Stardust and Diamond Dogs records, and I believe, and oh gosh, I got there so late. Like I got at the post office like just before six, because that's how late I ended up running. And so I got at the post office with just enough time to you know like get in queue and get my packages. And so then what happens is I get there, it's about quarter twenty after six. Unfortunately, the, uh, the Detroit Electric is, was this year right by Cafe Felix, which has since closed. It's been closed up for about six weeks now. Um, they just, I don't know, they just couldn't afford the downtown rent anymore is my guess. And, um... So, yeah, it's just like, you know, in hopes of making, you know, good use of the dinner rush with people in the outdoor seating, um, I, I'm like right by one of the closed down places downtown, and then what happens was, um, so like, like there's like, there's the Mongolian barbecue like right next to there, but... Um, yeah, everybody was just, like, really absorbed in their meal over there, and at some point, goddamn barbershop quartet, no, actually it was, like, six of them, barbershop sextet was, um, was hired to serenade this family with an infant who was having their first birthday party, I guess, so it's, like, you know, parents and grandparents and... I'm like, and, and they're just like right behind me. I'm like, this is my life today, isn't it? Um, I, and I also ended up talking with this really sweet woman, um, LaShawn. I've kind of seen her around. I think, um, I don't know. I, I know she, uh, I know I've, I've seen her a couple times talking to my friend Jesse and I've known Jesse for a long ass time. Uh, yeah, Jesse and I both know each other since, like, um, <laughs> since we were both cognizant of, but trying to rationalize ourselves out of transitioning. So, uh, so yeah, like, I ended up having this great conversation with LaShawn. She's, she's a lovely person. She is. Uh, a bit, <laughs> uh, 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 kind of, kind of reminded me of my dad in some of the ways that my dad would just like ramble on about nothing. So, um, but yeah, very, very lovely woman, and she was saying, you know, that that she's seen me around for a while, but I'm usually just like so like focused on getting to do what I'm doing on whatever day, which, um, and and she said that you know she she wasn't sure if I was you know like 
you know, going to be open to being talked to or not. And I said, you know, usually I'm just like, usually I am. It's just like I've, I've been in and out of this area since 1998. And you get used to the fact that in a college town, especially two college towns, like, like, like there's two major um, Southeast Michigan universities, there's two major Michigan in general universities in this area. So there's the University of Michigan, there's Eastern Michigan University, which has one of the better rated business schools in the state. And I think, I think some of the posters on EMU property have been uh, boasting like some kind of national recognition for their business college there. And then uh, Washtenaw Community College, which a lot of U of M and EMU students take classes there as well just to um, basically save a little bit on tuition for certain. A lot of people will take the first year or two at WCC and then transfer to um, either EMU or U of M. When you want to focus more hardcore on your major, um, you know, you'll end up transferring to, you know, U of M or EMU, whoever's got the better thing for what you're going out for. Yeah, I really wanted to, uh, take some video of, you know, myself out there, like, basically making noises with my accordion. That's what, that's what I said to LaShawn, that, you know, I'm just, I'm just out here singing Blackboard Sky and, uh, We Are the Dead and figuring out the ins and outs of how to, uh, make noises with this. At home, I tend to stick with the harmonium because I, I, I prefer the sound. In fact, I was just like kind of annoyed with the, uh, with the tones, the melodion, the, um, diatonic accordion that I've got. I, I was kind of disappointed with some of the, um, the, the tones and the octave that's at. It's a bit, um, it's at a bit higher octave than I like. I really wish that my back was up for bringing the harmonium out. Accordion is smaller and therefore more portable and you know I'll take that out busking but at home I'm gonna concentrate on the uh, on the harmonium. Uh, they're both organs so there's that. If I ever get into a position where I'm going to be performing live or touring it's gonna be the harmonium. Uh, I'll take the uh, I'll take the accordion out on the streets with me. Uh, that'll be like a special treat for people who get to see me as a street performer and what and where did my exacto go i am not sure i am not seeing it these are seeds and i should not toss them in that general direction and, and i've got scissors <laughs> ah, these are my better scissors too oh what happened to you exacto knife it's here it's here i gotta pick up the uh, the coffee table but it's here i'll find it i have to find it this place has got to be cleaned up enough that the, uh, the city inspector jackass is going to yell at management that my housekeeping skills are a little to be desired. I'm like, oh, come on. I'm, I take keep house better than my ex does, so that's good. I mean, at the very least, I can say that's true because I actually do my laundry. Oh my gosh. <gasps> or oh my god. Oh my gosh. Somebody got me this. Oh. Okay, so this is from, uh, so, okay, it's coming to, um, to my P.O. box, obviously, since I went there. Obviously, um, street address of the P.O. box, just because Amazon. Um, so yeah, this is, I've definitely seen, um, the, uh, the thrift books people on Amazon. So, oh my gosh, did you please, did you include, oh my gosh, it has everybody's sticky notes in it, but I have... I have read so many mixed things about this book, but it's one of those things that I never was able to pick up. Oh, why aren't you telling me? Okay, so... There is no... There is no receipt in here. Is it within the book itself? Did somebody stick it in here? Let us find out. It's got whoever's old sticky notes from when they themselves were reading this. Please tell me there is a gift receipt stuck in this book that will tell me who bought this for me. Oh my gosh. So this book, I have... It has a bit of a reputation. Um, oh gosh. Uh, so my friend Adrian, she's going to be doing a review of Gothcraft by Raven Digitalis. And 
I like Raven. He's a sweet, he's a sweet man, sweet person. I forget if he's, um, hopped on the non-binary-ish, um, train, but, uh, but yeah, he's, he's a very sweet guy, um, but he's, uh, <laughs> he's very well aware of how stupid Gothcraft is in parts, and he chalks it up to the fact that he was 22 when he wrote most of it, and he was about 24 when it was published, because it was published in 2006, and I know his birthday. <laughs> I also have a lot of friends who are writers through, like, actual publishing houses, so I understand, like, how the publishing thing, like, how that can actually, like, take a while. So, yeah, this one, like, uh, even before I had read the, um, the Amazon reviews on it, this one was, this one is so mixed. Even compared to Gothcraft. Now, Gothcraft, that is one that I l kinda like it, but kind of as a guilty pleasure sort of thing. Um, it is a very stupid book. It is. It is. But it is stupid in all of the ways that only a 22 year old who is way more excited about something than they are knowledgeable can be stupid. So it's clear that as he was writing this, he was at that, that perfect age of like tw very early 20s where he is like diving head first into both goth and paganism. And he is like far more excited about these topics than he is knowledgeable. And honestly, he does a much better job explaining goth than he does explaining paganism in this book. And, um, and there is a paper trail about what I'm going to say next is like, um, so I wrote a v review of this on my old, um, uh, semi-retired polytheist blog. I keep it up because I know that there are people who still um, reference various posts I made on of Thespiae, and it's not so much that I'm no longer polytheist, it's not, it's not that I'm no longer um, uh, dedicated to Eros, as I still am, it's just my relationship with that deity has changed, and I'm... I feel it would be, at the very least, like, kind of dishonest to continue, um, blogging under that, um, uh, under that blog, so, um, there, there's still a lot of useful information on there, including my review of Gothcraft, uh, at least the text form. I'm doing a series of books on pagan cringe, and that is, like, <laughs> in the top three that I want to get to first. I'm not sure which one I'll do first, but probably that one, just because it's... it's stupid in all of the ways that only a 22-year-old who is more excited about a topic than he is knowledgeable of that topic can be stupid. And like I said, he does a better job explaining goth than he does explaining paganism, and even the ways he explains goth has tendencies towards being stupid in all the ways that a 22-year-old can be stupid. This one, though, it came out the same year, and at least from what from what I've gathered, um, from what other people have told me when they've read it, and from reading some of the Amazon reviews, it seems that the ways that this one is very... mixed is, it seems unlike Gothcraft, um, a lot of people get the impression that Brendan Knight wasn't exactly sure which direction to go with this, in a way. So let me read the back, and of course they're going to put a goddamn catalog sticker on here. At night, it's easy to see yourself as you really are. Wait, what? <laughs> that alone is telling me where this is going. At night, it's easy to see yourself as you really are. Artistic, elegant, romantic, goth. End sentence. Oh dear. This, this is gonna be wonderful. 
You're part of something that's beyond all the cliched answers manufactured by mainstream society. Okay. You already know what color black to wear or why despair is a healthy response to the current state of the world. Okay, I mean, oh god. That really hasn't changed in 12 years, has it? Oh, 13 years. Lucky 13! You've got a taste for poetry, literature, vampirism, and know it's mundane life ha that has to change so that you can howl, brood, rage, and passionately express your inner demons! Exclamation point. Man, what? So why not use a grimoire of unique dark magic to do just that? Brenda Knight, a goth witch. Goth witch, as in, like, one thing. So, <laughs> not goth, comma, witch. Brenda Knight, a goth witch, knows how to demystify the many misrepresentations surrounding the goth movement. She also understands how to celebrate its positive, vital spirit in goth magic with a K. She will teach you to... List... Cast spells, perform rituals, and animate charms. Create and empower supernatural tools for a goth altar of high sheen black and blood red. Ah. Truly inhabit goth temple- wait, what? Truly inhabit goth temples and other- What the hell is a goth temple? I need to go there. <laughs> <laughs> and other sacred spaces with a knowledge of feng shui, astrology, and tarot. Okay. No goth mythology and the history of dark magic? Celebrate your individualism while maintaining a connection to the spiritual tribe and much, much more. Welcome to Witchcraft's New Dark Age. Uh, Brenda Knight is the author of the best-selling Good Spells series from Chronicle Books. Okay. A scholar of medieval literature and modern poetry, she has studied with many in the leading of the leading names in Wicca, such as Starhawk, uh, Zazana Budapest, Eileen Holland, uh, Christopher Penzak, and others. Uh, Knight has led ritual and magic workshops uh, throughout North America and founded a retreat cen center in Mendocino, California, where she conducts ongoing Wicca workshops. Okay. Oh. Uh, as a pagan author, she's got quite a pedigree, but... What does she do with it? That's the real $64 question here, isn't it? I'm getting so excited about this book and, like, completely ignoring the big giant package between my legs. Uh, I, I just have to know, like, what the hell does she think goth mythology is? Goth mythology, flying the fields of the dead. Wait, what? Gosh, this is gonna be so, so wonderful for all the wrong and right reasons. European tribes that made up the Goths had a rich and varied mythology. Long, dark, and icy winters dominated the, the world their gods and goddesses inhabited. Winter, the longest season for these folks, was the... Okay. Uh, I suppose that makes some sense, I, I guess. Uh, was the time for the rebirthing of the world. For example, in the hardy Vikings mythos, they believed in a quintessence besides the revered four elements so essential to pagan belief. Oh my gosh, so okay, this earth, air, fire, water, that, uh, I know it comes up with Empedocles, but I believe that's of Babylonian origin, um, Empedocles being, um, Hellenic philosopher, and I believe it's Empedocles. I know later because uh, he was a pre-Socratic, and I know later um, Hellenic philosophers also incorporated the four classical elements of earth, air, fire, water, but I believe it is Babylonian in origin. I'm not entirely sure those would have been especially known to uh, Germanic tribes. Um, so that right there is like making me want to fact-check immediately. Uh, they believed that 
winter itself had a unique energy that had made it the fifth element. Wait, what? Winter as an element? Oh my god. I, I gotta fact check this. Okay, so we've got the Valkyries, Norns, Mother Holda, Odin. Okay, so I'm recognizing some of these. Uh, but she's mixing um, heathen and, you know, as in like Germanic, Norse, etc. So she's mixing like uh, heathen and Celtic. Uh, deities here. Okay, I guess that makes some sense as, um, start something like, yeah, the Northern European tribes. Oh, that made up the Goths. No, nope. right. Okay, that makes some sense. I don't, do we know much about, like, the, the, um, like, as in, like, the Romans v. Goths? Do we know much about their specific stuff they did? Again, this is something where I'm gonna have to fact check, because as a, as a polytheist, my, um, my background is mostly Hellenic, and I say mostly because um, when I was in high school, I um, I was looking up some Celtic stuff. I found more on um, on on fairy lore, but uh, like you just could not find good um, Celtic mythology resources at the Lenawee County libraries in the 90s. I don't know if that's changed, but, um, you, so yeah, like the Tecumseh Library, the Lenawee County Library, um, and the Adrian, uh, Library, th th those were, like, shit for, um, Celtic mythology resources, and Usenet being what it was at the time wasn't much better. It was slightly better, but not by a whole lot. So yeah, I, I know some Celtic stuff, but I'm not very well knowledged in that. And since um, actually getting into the Raythu books, I I am at a point where I am um, incorporating um, the uh, the Dahara into my practice. And um, one of these days, I'm gonna have a video um, that's. I'm gonna do, like, note scripting, which is, like, the most I ever do as far as scripting goes. Fairy myth and magic goth on gossamer wings. I'm, okay, so we've got stuff on... So we've got some stuff on Faelor. I'll have to read a bit more about stuff. Um, just to, you know, just to, like, and then fact check. I always fact check when I'm reading pagan books. I just, I just do. I just do, like, because when I, um, when I was, like, when my practice was strictly Hellenic, I was involved in Reconstructionist circles, so we place a lot of emphasis as a Reconstructionist as on, on not just the, um, the, the surviving writings, but also on anthropology and everything. Fact-checking as I'm reading popular little, as, rather than academic, um, pagan books, I, I have to go back and fact check everything, especially if I have personally never seen that, you know, put that way before. Now this one, now this big ass package. Oh, oh, something's wrapped up. Something's in one of these, oh, this is... Oh my gosh. Order and keep your gift a surprise. Unro unwrap your present before opening this envelope. Okay. So there's this here. Okay. What is this? Uh, hi, Rowan. Enjoy your gift. I love your gritty, <laughs> no nonsense gothic bizarre from Filthy Witch. Oh my gosh. Oh, has, uh, has Filthy Witch. Have, have you been in the, uh, in the, um, 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 uh, the, the chat, when those used to stream regularly. Oh my, oh my gosh, oh, this is record, this is a record, this is a record. How do I open it? How do I open it? Oh my gosh, oh. Uh, if I got you on Facebook, I don't remember your stream name. Ah, filthy witch. I'm trying to remember the last comment I might have seen from you. This is gonna drive me nuts. <gasps> oh! Oh my gosh! Oh! Chanel Monet. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. She is she is so precious. Yeah, I know she's not she's 
she's not a goth, but she is just, she is so precious. Just, she, like I said, she's just like, like, think if like Prince and Grace Jones had a baby, this would be their baby. And, okay, this is the same thing as the little card did. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna open it right up. <laughs> now I feel stupid spending so much time talking about that book that, uh... <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, oh. She is. She's like the spiritual baby of Prince and Grace Jones, and I have a list. I'm gonna do a rundown of... Oh my gosh. I'm gonna do a rundown of a, a, a list of musicians that... A list of non-goth musicians and, you know, a couple bands that every goth I know, especially if you're of a certain age like myself, that, like, almost every goth I know at least has mad respect for and is probably a fan of their music. She is... She's just... She's just so precious. Just... Just... Look. Oh my god. You just... She's just... A, she's just so adorable and talented and... Oh, there's the lyrics card. She's just, like, so adorable and talented on so many levels and she's just... Oh my gosh. And plus, you know, she 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 wrote that um, the, the, the one on here with uh, with uh, yeah, make me feel that was that was written with Prince, and so of course, you know, I I'm mad jealous. I just lo I just love this. I just love this this young lady so much. She's just she's just so amazing, and oh oh my, I'm just. And, like you gotta look at her and just see like oh she's just she's just beautiful and I would I would totally wear a headdress out like this out to the club with one of these days I could probably make myself one it uh I mean it wouldn't be the exact same thing of course you know you know mine would but it's like oh, I could totally make I would totally wear oh my gosh oh my gosh Oh my gosh, one of the most beautiful, you know, gorgeous, lush, you know, sounding records of the year, and, and shit, of, like, last year, I yeah, of last year, <laughs> and it's not even goth, but it's, it's, it's one that I definitely looked forward to since, you know, her, um, Electric Lady Land, and of course, uh, eh, you know, I've got Janelle Monet from Filthy Witch, and I thank you so much. And I, I feel so. I, I honestly do. I feel bad. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. You know, I'll do a search for your comments and see, hope that refreshes my memory. I'm just. I, but thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Oh, I love her so much. <laughs> she is. She's like like this. This this girl is my Madonna. She is. She's like my. No, Grace Jones is my Madonna. This 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 girl's like my Lady Gaga. Let's let's put let let's do it that way. Let's like. <laughs> no, who am I kidding? I'm a goth. Stevie Nicks is my Madonna. That's just like, yeah, yeah. I'm like yeah yeah. Rufus Wainwright was right. That's yeah yeah yeah. No, Grace Jones is nobody's Madonna. Grace Jones is everybody's Grace Jones. It's like, no, no, it's not, like, no, no. Can't compare Grace Jones to Madonna. Just like, that, that's like, I shouldn't have even said that. That is, that is insulting to Grace Jones and obscenely too complimentary to Madonna. The, 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 that woman is trash. She's just... <laughs> and I can say this because I, I, I have, I have worked with people who have worked with her and oh my gosh oh my gosh I've got I've got this wonderful record from uh, Filthy Witch and again thank you so very much oh my gosh oh my gosh this is such oh oh I I'm 
I am. I am. I'm a little. I'm a little. Like, I'm, a, I'm a little choked up by this. It's like, I really. I really wasn't expecting. Um. I. I, I like. I know. I know. It's. Uh, yeah. It, it's my birthday, and yeah, it's kind of tacky to ask for stuff, and you know, like I. I've. I've I've worked as a street musician. It's just you know it's kind of humiliating to just like you know like go out and like basically ask for money, even if you're doing something that entertains somebody, and you know and and they're you know and, and it's and it's a deal. Like it's just like busking. Like like I'm I'm going out there and I'm not even asking anybody to sign up and like give me a regular paycheck. I'm just saying, hey, if you hear what the hell I'm doing, like, um, like, yeah, like, the, the first, the first dollar I got tonight was, um, was when I just decided to, uh, scrap my original plan, just, like, very spur of the moment, um, and just, like, get into, um, um, Wall of Voodoo and David Bowie covers, uh, it was, uh, it was Blackboard Sky that somebody gave me my first dollar of the night, and it wasn't even just a dollar, it was a five dollar bill. And, um, and yeah, um, I, when I got to Bowie, like, there was, there was a few people who just, like, put in, like, uh, I can't remember if it was $3 or $4 from the rest, but, yeah, it's like, I, uh, oh, wait, no, it was $3, because I, by, by the time everybody was going, I had $8 in my bucket that I did not start the day out with. I usually add one or two of my own bills myself because I've noticed that kind of encourages people to, you know, because they're just like, oh, well, if somebody else put it in there, I'd feel like an asshole not doing it. But yeah, it's, um, um, but yeah, it's like something where I was like, I'm not even expecting, like, you know, I'm not even expecting a whole dollar. I'm just saying, you know, hey. Okay, so I, I know how late this video was because I shot... Uh, everything else on the 12th, and as of today, it was the 17th, uh, it's, the clock is past midnight, so it's technically the 18th now, but, uh, yeah, part of the reason that I took so long to upload this is sometimes the camera on my phone will just decide that it's not going to save a clip of video that I just spent 20 minutes on, I don't always notice right away that I just decide not to save that clip. And, but sometimes, sometimes I can still find it. It just uh, got sent to a different folder for some reason. I don't know. I got to look in the settings on the camera on this phone. But obviously, I could not find the, uh, the last of that. And Unfortunately, like, what you got already is already had, like, 40 minutes cut out just because I just, obviously, I ramble without direction more often than not with my videos. I just, I know what I want to talk about, and I just let myself loose. Uh, the most scripting I ever do is just, like, I'll take note points of things I definitely want to address. And Kitty! And usually there's a kitty who wants to get involved somehow. Mm. Don't you love me, baby? But yeah, if the video ends up over an hour, it tends to have the hardest time saving as a single file with the program I use. <sighs> Please move. Move your bat. Um, so yeah, I had to cut a whole lot out. The important part that I remember was in that video was again, thanks so much to Filthy Witch for the Janelle Monet record, and thanks again to my... I could not at all find any sort of... find a gift receipt from the, uh, from the third-party seller, uh, for this book, so I have no idea who sent it to me. If you are the one who did, thank you so much. Please let me know who you are in the comments. Again, thanks so much, my my mystery gifter of goth magic. Uh, yeah, that, that, that just looks so... It, it looks like it has potential to definitely make me fact check the whole time I'm reading it. I don't know if it's going to be a cringe pagan book, but uh, but yeah, like I said, the, the reviews I'd seen of Goth Magic, uh, the most consistent criticism I've seen of this, uh, is 
People seem to think that she wasn't quite sure which direction to take this, whereas on the other hand, Raven Digitalis with goth, goth craft, even though it is a occasionally painfully, but otherwise just kind of generally stupid book. It, it is a stupid book, and it has very stupid things to say, some of them just coming out of completely nowhere, uh, but he does have a direction that he's going in with this, and he knows what he wants to say and how he wants to say it. It just, what he's saying and how he's saying it is just kind of stupid. Uh, whereas this one, uh, most people seem to think she's she wasn't quite sure what she wanted to do with it, but like I said, this came out the same year as Gothcraft, so my guest was this publisher, who would be Citadel Press Kensington, um, uh, got wind of Thwethun uh, putting out Gothcraft, and they decided, okay, let's do a similar book, but not exactly the same, and so she's the one who they got to do it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I thank you so much, my mystery gifter who sent me this one. I am, I'm going to enjoy reading it for all of the right and wrong reasons, I'm sure. Just like taking the skims that I did, that you witnessed like half of them. Uh, just as a quick note, because it is the, it technically turned over past midnight, and it's definitely going to upload on the 18th of July. This is, if you're in the Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti area, I'm going to be busking again downtown Ann Arbor during Art Fair in the general vicinity of the Liberty Station Post Office, hopefully by Abracadabra Jewelry, that's my jeweler. Um, I was there with my harmonium for one or two days, definitely one, possibly two days last year during Art Fair. Um, I might be over there, or I might, as I said on my uh, my Facebook music page, I might be at the alley by next to Ideal Piercing, formerly known as Pangea Piercing, or I just might be by the steps at Liberty Station Post Office Federal Building. Who know? Uh, who knows? I don't know. If my back is feeling up to it, I might bring the harmonium, or I might just say, you know, screw it. Um, even though my back is feeling up to it and just bring the accordion all three days. I'll be out there um, uh, the 18th, approximately 3 to 6, and the reason I'm leaving early is for game night. Trust me, after art fair, I'm going to need game night. After even three hours of art fair, I'm going to need game night. Everybody hates it. Uh, in fact, the art crawl episode of Bob's Burgers, I always call it the art fair episode of Bob's Burgers, and I found myself calling the Ann Arbor fart air uh, art crawl on occasion, but no, it's... <laughs> I've even called it the Fart Air episode of Bob's Burgers. <laughs> I'm sure everybody in the area does that um, with that episode. Um, I'm going to be out on Friday the 19th uh, from approximately 3 to approximately 9, unless Fart Air Security chases me out earlier, uh, which happened on one of the days I was out um, at Abercadabra Jeweler last year with my harmonium, um, even though I was, I was there as a guest of the jeweler. So... Um, uh, I will not be out there Saturday, Saturday the 20th, I will be in Detroit to see Tim Capello, uh, the, uh, the saxophonist who was featured in Lost Boys, doing that Still Believe song, everybody knows that. I've got an original, um, 87 press of the soundtrack on a vinyl LP. I'm going to bring the jacket with me to the concert with a silver sharpie. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him to sign that. Um, so yeah, Saturday, uh, I'm I'm not even gonna be in town. I'm not even gonna be in town. Uh, at least no more so than I need to be to get to the Amtrak station. So uh, yeah, I'm taking a train to Detroit because uh, well because it's art fair. Hopefully I can also make it out Sunday the. Uh, 21st, approximately 3 to approximately 6, and, um, and yeah, and then, uh, Monday the 22nd, that is indeed my birthday, that is the official birthday, I will be just, you know, as a patron of the nightclub at, um, uh, Tenetco, or Necto, short for Nectarine Ballroom, 
but it's officially Necto after like a uh, management change about 15, 16 years ago. Something. I'm going to be out there for the 15th anniversary of Factory Mondays at Nectarine um, out on Liberty Street in downtown Ann Arbor. Uh, this is going to be not just their um, anniversary, uh, 15th anniversary. They also decided to shift Goth Prom. Like last year, Goth Prom was in June. The year before, it was in May. The year before, it was in April. And they just keep shifting Goth Prom a month, a month later every year it seems like I don't know why I don't know why but they've decided to combine goth prom with 15th anniversary who knows it is so far off from prom season but whatever it's whatever it's nightclub it's nightclub I'm gonna be there uh, probably not in anything vaguely resembling prom gear but who cares it's my birthday and I am getting in for nada so um, also, um, Monday, I will be hitting up all the places in the area that do free ice cream on your birthday. Um, but yeah, yeah. Alright, so now you know my whole weekend schedule, and that, yeah. Alright, bats and kisses, dears, and thank you all so very much, especially my mystery gifter of goth magic and, uh, dirty witch who got me the Janelle Monet record, which is on my shelf, and it is too hot to go up and get it. So, <laughs> take care. Bye-bye. I have no idea what I'm looking at. I'm grabbing things, and then I realize that's not what I was looking for. That's eyeshadow.